Hey everybody, Mr. Snyder here with another art lesson. Uh, again, I hope that everybody is staying healthy and staying safe. And um, I want to again thank so many people for sending me uh, photos of their, um, their op art projects. Um, it was really awesome to see so many people enjoy the lesson. And uh, I hope that many of you will enjoy this lesson as well. Uh, so for today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about symmetry in art. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to actually start with our names. Uh, well, I'm going to use my name. You can use your name or any name that you want. You can use your first name or your last name, middle name. It really doesn't matter to me. And we are going to take your name and we are going to transform it into what I call a name monster. All right. And actually my name... Snyder is hidden somewhere in this drawing. And if you look closely, you can probably see it in there. All right. But um, to do this project, it's real simple. You don't need a lot of supplies. Uh, you just need a standard sheet of copy paper. All right. Any type of paper really works for this, but I just happen to have copy paper laying around. Um, a pencil and some type of marker. I always like to use Sharpies. I always have tons of Sharpies around. And then whatever you want to use to color your monster later on, whether it's crayons, colored pencils, markers, paint, it's completely up to you. So um, I'll let you get your supplies just like before. And when you're ready, you can uh, come join me. I've got my Chewbacca mug and uh, we'll do this. Let's go. Before we begin drawing, I feel it's important that we define what the term symmetry means. And by definition, it's the quality of being made up of exactly similar parts facing each other or around an axis. All right, to help demonstrate this, I drew a very simple heart shape Aww. on my sheet of copy paper here. And I folded the paper in half. And that fold is going to represent the axis line. All right, now you can have symmetry when you have parts of an object uh, that are similar that face each other or around an axis line. And our axis line, as I mentioned, is this vertical fold. Uh, axis lines can go many different directions. They can go vertical, horizontal, diagonal, but in this case it's vertical. And you can see when I fold the paper that the heart folds upon itself. All right. And all of the marker lines would end up touching. All right. Now this is an example of mirror-like symmetry. All right. Not all symmetry has to be mirror-like. It can be what's called approximate, which means I can have uh, the halves of my paper are very close to the same, but they're not exactly identical, and that still creates a sense of visual balance. All right, And visual balance is always very pleasing to the viewer's eye. Um, it can put people at ease when they look at your artwork and so on. Um, our name monsters, this is an example of mirror image, and so I'm going to show you how to do this one. Um, and so to get started here, you need to pick a name. It can be your first name, middle name, last name. It could be your nickname, somebody else's name. You just need to have a name and be ready to go for this tutorial. So here we go. It's not as difficult as it might look, uh, but there are quite a few steps. The first step is you're going to take your regular sheet of copy paper and you're going to fold it in half the long way. Uh, some of you may call it a hot dog bun. All right, there's, you know, the hamburger buns and the hot dog buns. Uh, we are going to turn it into a hot dog bun. All right, uh, you're then going to open it up just like that. We're going to turn it over so that the folded side is facing us. The fold is facing up. All right, I'm going to turn it this way, horizontal. And then I'm going to use a pencil to write my name. Now, when you write your name, whatever name it is, first name, middle name, last name, I want your first initial to be very big, uh, the first letter of your name to be very big. I'm going to do a nice big S. All right. Now, I tend to think they look a little bit better if the rest of your letters are all half the size of your first letter. They should all come very close, if not touching the fold. All right. That's very important that they touch the fold. All right. And uh, I like to do all capitals. You could do lowercase, you could even do cursive, you could do any type of uh, calligraphy that you wanted to do, but I like to do all capitals. I just like to make all the rest of my letters in my name about half the size of the first letter of my name. 
All right, so I'm gonna try, the hardest part in all of this is trying to space your name out so it goes all the way from one side of the paper to the other. All right, so there's my example there. All right, it may take you one or two tries to get it so it fills up the whole paper from left to right. From there, I would take a Sharpie and I'm going to then outline it. Uh, but the next step here is to take this and because this is a symmetrical artwork, specifically mirror image symmetry, we want the two halves to be identical. So I'm gonna have to write my name now on this half. And not only is it enough to just write my name, but I also have to do it uh, in reverse in order for the two halves to be able to fold up on top of each other and be the same. Now that could be really daunting and very difficult, uh, but I'm gonna show you a quick little easy trick on how you can do it. Um, so we're gonna take a little field trip. Here we go. All right. So here I am at one of the windows in my house, and I have my uh, name drawing so far. And as I mentioned before, we have to find a way to get my name from one side of the paper to the other and have it be a mirror image, so it would have to be uh, in reverse. So one of the ways that I found to do this is to actually fold the paper back up so that the name is on the outside. You don't want the name on the inside, you want it on the outside. And then we're going to put the name side of the paper against the window. And look, it's shining through. All right, and this is where I can take my pencil. All right, and I'm just going to trace my lines. Now, if you feel really confident in this, you can skip the pencil part and go right to the Sharpie. But please do not write on your windows with Sharpie. I don't want any messages from your parents saying that you have markered up the glass in their windows. All right, so I highly suggest you do this in pencil. All right, so there we go. All right, and when I open it up, you can kind of begin to see how the two halves are mirror images. All right, all right, back to our work table. All right, so the next step for me is to take my Sharpie and now trace the reverse letters of my name on this side. All right, great. Now, before we begin doing any more drawing, I want you to spend a couple minutes taking a look at what you currently have, all right? And so our papers are gonna go vertically either this way or this way and I want you to spend some time turning it back and forth and see if you can begin to see a monster take form or take shape for instance may you may begin to see where you might want to put the eyes or a mouth or arms or feet okay it's completely up to you how you want to do this all right but just spend a little time taking a look to see where you might want to start creating your monster and for me this section of my D's right here, they look like they could be like the openings uh, for eyes. Now remember, this is your name monster, not mine. So by all means, feel free to create any type of monster that you want. Yours is gonna look different anyway because you have a different name than I do, okay? So if you wanna add two sets of arms or three sets or even four sets, if you wanna have six eyeballs, um, if you wanna have giant clown shoes for feet, by all means, go ahead and add any of that. The more creative, the better. And I can tell you that if you really take your time and put your effort in and you are super creative, you're gonna have an amazing artwork when you're finished. Now notice that I'm only working on one half of the project currently. That's because I'm gonna do the same technique that I did earlier when I transferred my name over to the blank side. I'm gonna do that when I finish this drawing here that way I'm saving myself a little bit of work. Again, you don't have to pick just one side. If you wanna work on both sides at the same time, you can do that. Just if you're gonna go for that mirror image symmetry, then you're probably only gonna to wanna to work on one half at a time. Adding in some tentacles here. My monster is kind of a combination of lots of different animals. You might see 
uh, lobster claws, uh, bull horns, uh, fuzzy ear. Lots of different parts of my imagination are kind of running wild as I add the different elements to my name monster. All right, so from here, it's the same process as before. We are now gonna go back to the window and I'm going to trace what I've drawn over here for my name monster onto this side so I have two halves that are symmetrically balanced. All right, so I just came back from the window and I have finished tracing both halves and I have a mirror image symmetrical name monster. One little thing to kind of uh, clean up a little at some edges uh, where your lines come together at the fold, you can always just kind of smooth those out with your Sharpie. Uh, I would then go ahead, if you're gonna color this, take an eraser uh, and erase any of your pencil lines that might be showing. It just kind of cleans it up for you a little bit before you do the coloring process. And then you are ready to begin coloring. And so that's what I'm gonna show you next. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, I colored the face of my monster before green. I'm gonna change it up a little bit, and this time I'm gonna do them in orange. And I'm gonna use colored pencil. I know I mentioned in my last video how much I enjoy colored pencils because you can do lots of different techniques. Uh, I love to vary the pressure and have some areas that have very light values and the areas that have very dark values. And that's kind of what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna start, feel free to use multiple colors in one section. You could do kind of like a tie-dye effect. It's really up to you. Again, this is your monster. Color him or her however you'd like, using whatever colors you'd like. You don't have to just stick to what I'm doing. All right, so I've colored in the flesh parts with very light orange. The next thing I'm gonna do is I like to go around the outside edges, or I should say the inside edges. I like to go around the inside edges and press firm and just create kind of like an outline. It creates a little bit of emphasis to that line that I created on the face. It gives it a little bit more visual importance, a little more visual interest. Sometimes too, it makes it come alive a little bit. And again, I'm just adding a quick little line to emphasize or enhance the edges of my monster. For the eyes, I'm gonna use a couple different colors here. I'm gonna use, let's see, what have I got here? Magenta and purple, and I'm gonna do magenta around the pupil. So here's where you can use multiple colors. You don't have to stick to just one. And then I'm gonna color with purple, but I'm gonna go around the eye with this technique to make it look a little bit more like an actual eye with all the different flecks of color. So I'm coloring more kind of in a, like a sun ray formation, I guess you'd call it, than straight up and down or left to right. I'm gonna use some blue and again, I'm not going to, I missed a little spot right there. I'm not going to shade it in completely. I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue in the corners to create some shadow. And notice whatever I'm doing on one side, I'm gonna do on the other because not only do we have symmetry in the actual drawing or design, but we also have symmetry in the color. So whatever I do on one side of my paper, I'm gonna do on the other to maintain that symmetry. Okay, so just put a little bit of light blue in here. 
Now I'm going to take this magenta again, and I'm going to go in and add some bloodshot eyes for our monster. You don't have to add it. I just want to add it for mine. And again, whatever I do on one side, I'm going to do on the other. Okay. All right. So at this point, I'm going to stop and I'm going to let you take control of your work and let you color it however you like. Uh, here's my finished product again. Make sure that when you're done, you sign and date the bottom. Okay. And find a really cool spot to display this. Good luck and uh, have fun. All right, so that's it for this Name Monster Art Lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And as always, I'd love to see your creations when they're finished. You can send them to my email, which I'm going to add here. You can also send them to me on Facebook or Instagram. Or if you're one of my students, please send it to me in the Google Classroom. I would love to see them. Please stay tuned for upcoming lessons. I'll be sending out a couple more here very soon. And until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, have a good one.